If you're using Google Workspace, there's new e-signature functionality that you can capture e-signatures directly inside of your Google Docs, which means you might be able to save an additional subscription if you're using something like DocuSign or PandaDoc. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and we help companies like yours get automated with portals, apps, and integrations. Now, right off the bat, this e-signature feature is not technically free. You do need to have a Google Workspace account, and you can see the different eligible plans for this. But this is included on business standard. So this is really the low tier for Google Workspace. And so you'll be able to get access to this. So many different companies and organizations already have this essentially bundled into the features that you already have today with Google Workspace. Now, we'll include the link to this document in the description below, but one of the questions that people oftentimes have is, okay, well, is this e-signature, is this legally valid? Can I use this in my really important agreements? And so the nice part about this is, as you can see in their FAQ, that these are legally binding e-signatures, that this is valid in the US and in the EU, and it's got some really nice audit log type features. And so the good news is you're not just injecting an image and scribbling on it and trying to inject that into a Google Doc. There were lots of weird workarounds that people were trying for many years, but this is actually a legally binding signature that you can utilize in your documents. So I'm inside of a Google Doc right now. This is just a free template that I pulled. This is perhaps an offer letter we want to be able to send out for employment. Now, you'd expect that we'd want to include different fields worth of information down at the bottom, both as we're sending this out and we're signing it on behalf of our company, as well as the actual person that we're extending this employment offer to, we want them to sign it as well. So I'm going to delete out some of these extra fields here, and we're going to go to insert up at the top, and you'll see that there's this option for e-signature fields. This is going to open up this panel for e-signature. Now, you'll also be able to access this at any time if you go to tools, and you'll see this area for e-signature. Now, if you don't have this available, again, make sure that this is on the workspace plan that you're currently utilizing. Now here you can see that we can insert fields for, it says signer one by default. But if we click this, you can actually manage the different signers. Now here, I wouldn't actually be typing in someone's name for signer one or signer two. This is going to more indicate how many different signers do we actually have. So for example, I might label signer number one as the manager, and then we'll add another signer. And this is where we're going to have an employee now be the person who's signer number two. We'll go ahead and save this. And then we can easily toggle between these two, the manager and the employee. And we've got the different color coding here to make it visually easy to understand who's doing the signing. So first of all, we'd have our manager and we want to grab their signature and we'll want to add their name. And maybe I want to put this underneath it. So I've got signature and name. And then the nice part is, is we've got the ability to add text fields. So text fields are going to be those other values if you want to inject this and we could give this its own label, we could give it a placeholder. And so maybe we want this placeholder to be title that they're actually putting in that they're the hiring manager for this role. And we could inject that information into the agreement. And you can see we also have this auto filled field and this is going to be for the actual date of the signature. So it's not going to be the user manually typing in the date. Instead, when you actually sign it, that's when it's going to populate it. And we've got the employee information here as well. So let's toggle this over to our employee. And just to keep it simple here, we'll add their signature and we'll enter and add the date signed. Now at any point, we're able to send this for signature. We can click this button to say request e-signature. And then now we can populate the information. So we're going to put in the email address of the manager, the email address of the employee we're sending this to. And we can include our own custom message that actually comes in with that notification to notify them to be able to sign that document. And then you'll notice this note down here, once requested, then it's going to take a PDF of this Google document to create and then share with the recipients. And this is really powerful because we don't want to send out an editable Google document that anybody can make changes to. So it's really important that it's actually converting this to the PDF before we sign. So let's go ahead and click the button to request our e-signature. So this is going to notify us that one of our recipients is outside of our organization. That's okay. We're going to go ahead and share this anyway. You'll see that it's now created that PDF document. And so we can click on this to be able to keep track of where this is currently at in the process. So this will look a little bit different than you're used to because now when we have this PDF open, you can see that we have the buttons up here to sign, reject, and then view the details. This is going to be essentially that 
audit log. In this case, it's saying we've got two different people who are pending on this. And once we sign it, then it's going to have the actual information about when it was signed. Now, as far as I can tell, we can't actually manage the order in which the signatures are applied. Now, this can be a little bit confusing because if we said, well, in order to extend the offer, we want to make sure that the manager signs it first. It's really not following an order of operations. It's just saying, hey, we have this document. It's now available to sign by both parties. So if the signing order is important, you might want to change that workflow a little bit. So I've got this signature request. This is coming to my personal email address that I have it associated with. I see that notification about the offer letter. Here's where I can open this up. So as the employee, this is all the information I need here. I can sign this with my information. So I'll go ahead and click it. And then here I'll be able to insert my name. It's going to kind of reproduce this as a digital signature that looks like I'm signing it. And I can include my initials as well. I'll go ahead and adopt and sign this. And now I can mark this complete. You'll notice that there is a terms of service for this that I have to agree to before I actually sign it. And then I get this notification to confirm that I've signed it and that I'm going to receive a signed copy once everybody has signed it. So I'll close this. And now as the manager, I can sign this as well. You'll notice that if we have that text field, I can click and manually enter it. But if I just come to the e-signature part, this doesn't actually have that field present. So you'll just want to make sure that you inject the information as you need it ahead of actually signing it. Once I've input that value, I'm going to go ahead and sign and add my initials. We'll adopt and sign and we'll mark complete. And at every step along the way, once we get that signature, we're going to get email notifications that we've received the signature. And it's also going to let us know when everybody has completed the signatures, that this is now good to go. In addition to that, it'll actually attach the PDF so that you can open it up. Both parties actually have the copy of this, and it's going to have the audit trail directly in here. So we can see what we signed to, but then down below, we can actually see each step along the way when it was sent and when each party signed it. Now, if I come back into the Google Doc and I go back to Tools and the e-signature, I'm not actually going to see anything here because, again, remember, this was the raw Google Doc, not the actual PDF. If we do open up the actual PDF document, then at any point we can click on View Details and it's going to show that same audit information about when this was signed by all the parties. And if I do download the PDF, then we're still going to get that audit trail with it even though it's not baked into what we have inside of Google Workspace, we can still see the information about that audit trail. Now, unfortunately, one of the main limiting features is that there's really not a lot of automation around this. So you would expect that a feature like this would have an API that would allow us to dynamically inject data into that agreement so that we could do this in bulk. So imagine you're a company and you're not really doing offer letters, but you're sending out contracts and it's coming from your CRM. And so every time you click a button in your CRM, it can just automatically generate those contracts. And there's no way to be able to do that today. This has been something that was actually requested two years ago. And we can see that there's more and more progress being made in terms of the features are being rolled out to more users. And so I would expect that in the near future, this will be a possibility. But if you need to do this really automated in bulk, you can't do that today. But for some of you, there are some automation steps that you can take, even though we don't have that API available to us. So for example, we could just take this employee and turn this into curly braces. And using a tool like make.com, we can do some automation with our Google Docs. One would be that we're going to create a document from a template. And so here we could choose a document. And we could have any of our fields with curly braces. So here's that employee and we could inject data dynamically. So here I'm typing out my name, Dan Lehman, but imagine we've got this coming from our CRM, which we could actually take those values dynamically. So let's just test this out if we were to run this automation. And when we open up our document, it's now injected the name Dan Lehman into this. So even though we'd still have to manually go into our tools and go to e-signature and request that e-signature, at least we can inject some of the data that we would need in the body of the document and do that automatically. The other part that we could automate is because we receive an email notification that says, hey, everybody's now signed this, we could use that as a trigger to be able to update something like our CRM and say, everybody has now signed this and actually take a copy of the PDF 
so that we could upload that attachment where we need it to go. So overall, for many organizations, having e-signature capabilities baked into Google Workspace is going to be a huge win. However, if you need all of the automation capabilities behind it, it's not quite mature of a product compared to many of the other options out there. If you have any questions about your own automations, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30-minute consultations. 